The following contains images that some viewers may find distressing. Globally, each year, we kill more than 2.8 trillion animals for food. And this is despite the fact that more than 1.5 billion vegetarians around the world prove demonstrably that for the vast majority, meat is not necessary for a healthy diet. Each year, more than 192 million animals are used for scientific testing, more than half a million of which are used to test cosmetics. And in America alone, more than 1.5 million unwanted dogs and cats are euthanized every year. But what gives us the moral authority to use animals like this? Some people argue that intelligence is what distinguishes human beings from other animals and is what justifies our moral superiority. But if intelligence is our yardstick for moral value, then should individuals with a higher IQ or better SAT scores be given greater moral consideration? Similarly, should those with intellectual disabilities be less deserving of moral treatment? Such a position would clearly appear to be incongruous with our current understanding of morality. Others have argued that our belonging to a distinct species, Homo sapiens, is alone sufficient to warrant the restriction of our moral considerations just to humans. However, this argument merely pushes the question back a step, for we must then of course ask, why is species identity a morally relevant criterion? To which, so far, there appears to be no adequate response. Finally, a great many have tried to argue that it is consciousness that distinguishes human beings from other animals, and that this is what grants us moral superiority. However, there is simply no evidence to support the idea that other animals lack consciousness. Indeed, given that we are so similar to many other animals in terms of our genetic history, biology and behaviour, it would seem more reasonable to assume the contrary, i.e. that other animals most likely have conscious lives that are just as rich as our own. Therefore, the moral basis for human exceptionalism appears to be at best weak, if not entirely groundless. Indeed, the Australian philosopher Peter Singer famously concluded as such in his book Animal Liberation, published in 1975. In his book, Singer proposes that our assumed moral superiority over other animals is a form of what he calls speciesism, which he defines as a prejudice or attitude of bias in favour of the interests of members of one's own species and against those of members of other species. According to Singer, speciesism is analogous to racism, where certain races are assumed to be subordinate and are exploited without moral justification. Singer argues that because there is considerable evidence that animals are as capable as you or I of experiencing emotion, including pain and suffering, or at the very least because we cannot in good faith rule this out, we are morally obliged to consider their moral interests just as we would those of other humans. This means we need to switch off our cultural autopilot and start giving greater consideration to questions such as whether it is morally right to kill and incarcerate animals for our food, to experiment on them, or to domesticate them and treat them like possessions. Ultimately, a reasonable question for all of us to ask is if we wouldn't do it to a human, then why are we morally justified in doing it to an animal? If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, Thanks for watching.